Hi guys, Squirrel here. I'm here. Today I'm making a very long overdue video. It's a studio tour. It's December 2015 and I'm going to welcome you guys to the nut house. This is where all my videos and streams are done. Uh, this is a converted garage, as you may or may not know. Let's step inside and I'll take you around. Hopefully the noise will be a bit quieter. There we go. Well, this is it. Welcome to my studio. This is where the magic happens. Let me just close these blinds here so we don't get any light bleeding through. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously this is the centerpiece. I'm going to take you through that last, actually. We'll, we'll do that at the end. Uh, what I want to do is I want to come around and just take you from, from this side. This is where we just walked in. I've just shut the blinds so we don't get any sort of light coming at us. Um, but yeah, let's just start over here. This is the filing cabinet, which is where all the paperwork is. Uh, this is my, my recording in progress go away sign. So that basically goes on the window um, when I'm recording. This is a uh, magnetic, whatever that is. Is that a kangaroo or something? I don't, even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Up here is just a small selection of some of the things that people have sent me, some of the fans have sent me. It's, it is a small selection. I've, I've been sent so much stuff. It's crazy. Um, but you can see we've got buses, we've got diggers, uh, we've, we've got, you know, trucks, school logistics trucks, Stobart trucks. Uh, that's an old character from, uh, called Isima, that was my World of Warcraft druid. Up here we've got, I think I've shown you this before, this is my 100k YouTube thing. I think the next stop for that is a million, so that could be a while. Over here we've got um, the shredder, the printer, and this thing here, which is again something that was sent to me. This is a, it's actually a nutcracker, look. You put the nut between the squirrel's mouth and boom, cracks the nut open, genuinely works. I have, uh, I have used it. Some beer at the back, uh, remote control helicopter, because. Uh, digital radio, when I just wanna put some background music on. This is an old microphone stand here, which I'm not using at the moment. Flat packed uh, boxes down the back there. This is my Tassimo. This is where I make coffee so that I can carry on streaming when I'm a bit tired. Uh, this is general sort of junk, you know, stuff in the cable -y bits and bits of hardware. Some books down here, Steven Erickson books there. Very recommended if you've never read those. Particularly if you're a fan of um, Game of Thrones, Steven Erickson's Dead House Gate series are fantastic. Anyway, what we've got down here? This is my organ. This, this is a radiator, by the way, as you may have guessed. It's just an electric powered radiator. I put it on very low and it just stops the chill from, so in the morning when I walk in the studio, rather than it just be cold, that just stops it getting cold overnight. The building's quite very well insulated, so it doesn't take much energy to power that at all, really. It just comes on now and again and, and keeps the temperature minimum. Uh, this is my, these are boxes for cables, power, uh, adapters, video, network, audio, some cleaning stuff. Up at the top here, cans of Coke, more cables, more, more junk, memory sticks, all that kind of thing. Uh, right up at the top, we've got a squirrel <laughs> and an empty flat pack box. Coming over here, we've got more cables and, you know, whatever, chargers. Then we've got, again, some things that have been sent to me. Uh, a squirrel registration plate. There's a yellow and a white one. And a 2015-0402 which is the date that I went full-time, 2nd of April 2015. So again, these were all sent to me from fans. It says at the bottom there, look, Year of the Squirrel, the Nut House. <laughs> that is a, well, that's a guitar, that's a metronome, isn't it? From my guitar days. I don't even know why I've got that in here, but I can just get the lid off. Um, yeah, you kind of just set it to what you want and then it does its thing, you know? It's a metronome. It does one job. <laughs> It has one job. Uh, my cupboards, uh, what have we got? This one here, full of stuff. Keys for things, paper clips, pens, pencils, scissors, you know, the usual stapler. This one, what have we got? More stuff from people, a squirrel glass. Keep calm and watch squirrel cup. Uh, a gift from Norway. The guy who sent this actually sent me a Norwegian woolly jumper. Oh my God, it needs to be about minus 10 outside before you can even put it on. It's insane. It's like Norwegian wool. Proper hardcore warm stuff. And yeah, cleaners, junk, whatever. Down this one, we've got, not very exciting this one, my hay fever tablets and stuff, some sweets, some boiled sweets in case you get a cold. 
Uh, batteries, uh, adapter, that should be in the box actually. What's on this one? This one is my rail control, the cab controller. So this is what I this is what I use when I'm playing train sim. I won't get it out because uh, I never get it back in. Uh, hard drive, SATA hard drive reader at the back. Uh, this is a thing that clips on the steering wheel. If you want to use it like farming sim, you know you can rotate the wheel like that. And that's just a box, HDMI box. I'll show you the device later. Down here, not terribly exciting stuff. Cables, microphones, tripod. An old one plus one phone down there that I no longer use. Um, right, let's have a look around here. So paperwork, this is where I put my stuff. My uh, my tablet's just kicking off here. It's watching my own streams, lol. <laughs> just quiet that down a second. What have I got down here? This is where I keep my Logitech G920 wheel. Uh, keep it there when it's not in use and then just get it out when I'm using it. Recycled paper down here. Um, right, these, what are these? You'll notice these. There are three of them. There's one over there, one over here, and one over there. They are, they're sound boards, basically. They're, um, you can see the thickness of it. They're about, what, two inches thick? Four centimeters, five centimeters, probably. And they're acoustic sound boards. And what they do is they absorb the sound reflecting around, because in a room like this, when you're speaking here, the sound waves are bouncing off all the corners here, and it sounds really, really echoey. And if you put these sound boards up, um, it basically um, stops the sound reflecting around and gives you a much, much higher quality sound. They were, they were custom made. And I have actually got one for the ceiling here, which you can put one above you, which stops the sound reflecting that way. But um, I didn't put it up in the end. I decided I want to put these up. The sound quality was good enough. I thought, no, I don't need to do this. I don't need to put this up here because there's not a lot of headroom to be fair. I'm six foot three and there's probably about, you know, that much between me and the ceiling. So I thought if I put the soundboard up, I'll start banging my head on it. So that's what they are. That's the old streaming PC down there. That's a whiteboard, which I've not yet put up. That's going to go here just for scribbling general things on it. Uh, this is the remote control for the aircon unit. The aircon unit is down there. That's a, an inverter, so it's, uh, it both heats and cools, can keep the temperature. You may be asking, why have I got an oil fill radiator if I've got an inverter? And the simple answer to that is once the temperature gets really cold, like down to about three or four degrees, less than that, um, the inverter has to take heat from the outside to warm the room up and it can't do it, so it starts frosting over and then it shuts down and then um, sort of melts the ice off and then carries on. It's all a little bit pointless really. So when the temperature gets this low, I just put that on. It's a lot easier. But for about 10 months of the year, the inverter is fantastic. Uh, bottle of Fanta. <laughs> this was given to me again when I went full time. Uh, it's basically a plaque that says, successfully met the required criteria in training and found to be fully qualified in all aspects as an online entertainer and is hereby awarded the title of full-time producer streamer, Year of the Squirrel. Fantastic, this is cut. This is solid aluminium and it's cut. It was laser etched by computer, um, all custom made and it's sitting on top of um, hardwood. I think it's, I think it's oak or something. It's a pretty expensive little thing that. And a 2015, whoops, let's not do that. A 2015 Year of the Squirrel, if you can see it down there clock which the batteries died on unfortunately uh, that's my phone that's a lamp so I've got two of these and obviously I bounce the light off they also sort of bounce light behind the monitor so that it lights the face up subtly as well there's two there's one down the other end down here though so two of those lamps and they are daylight LED lamps the same as these these are daylight LED you notice they rotate and, and pull out, and I have them in a particular configuration so that they bounce off the walls. I don't like direct light, I never have done. And uh, by doing it that way, I find it illuminates me a lot better. Down here is the Xbox 360, which is um, hooked up, like the cables go down there. I'll show you that in a minute, what happens down there. And then the PCs are here. Just one more thing before we start looking all into that. This green screen here, is, is homemade. I looked for a fold up, you know, retractable green screen and you can't find them or they're very expensive. So in the end, I went down to B&Q and I bought two pieces of copper pipe, which are what they are. Very cheap. One piece there, another piece is here. 
And basically, I then bought some green screen cloth, some good quality cotton green screen from eBay. Whole thing probably cost me about 20, no, actually about 35 pounds, I think, the whole thing. Put three hooks on the ceiling and uh, put the cloth around the pipe, stitched it around the pipe, and I just, re I just removed those two cable ties, the retractable cable ties, the reusable ones, you just press them. These cable ties are fantastic, by the way. So useful. Uh, and it just rolls down, it just drops down. So when I'm streaming, it, 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 I have, you know, I, I cut it to the width I wanted it. That is probably about two meters wide, uh, maybe two and a half. And it just drops down and completely green screens behind me. And then on the days when I'm not streaming, I just retract it back. And um, we get all the benefit of these soundboards anyway. So yeah, it, it works really well. It's a really cheap green screen. One thing I didn't show you actually was over here. I totally forgot about this bit. Um, cupboards and drawers. Um, what have we got in here? This is the, the junk bits. This is my, what, controllers, hot glue gun. <laughs> I've glued everything. When I bought a hot glue gun, I was going around the house going, what can I hot glue? What needs fixing? Doyle, come here. Doyle's my dog. I'm like, do you need your paws gluing? I can do something. <laughs> so I just went mad with hot glue guns. But yeah, screwdrivers and that kind of stuff in that. And the second one, yeah, this is kind of a naughty draw, to be honest. Um... It's a snack drawer. It's got Toblerones. It's even got, again, sent to me by <laughs> a fan, McVitie's Jaffa Cake Squirrel Edition, which is just crazy. Uh, these were sent to me in a giant bar. There's about 20 of these things. This is such the, like Norwegian chocolate. It's so nice, so good. And then the bottom drawer, um, these are, well, these are cable ties, obviously. Uh, these are Velcro pads, and there are these things are useful. I got this from a garden center. They're basically cable ties with a white label on, and I use them to label cables with. And then these are the reusable ones I was telling you about. So you can see that they they spin around, click on, but they're releasable. So they're not one shot. You don't have to cut them off. You can just release them. And I use them for cable management, which I'll kind of show you in a minute. What have we got in here? Nothing exciting in there, just stuff, Tassimo stuff. And in here, we've got more junk, so we're not gonna look in there anymore. Right, let's get around to the computer side of things. Um, actually, down here, we have my chair, my old chair, and a Harley Davidson jacket, Harley Davidson motorcycle jacket that I got from San Francisco when I went to TwitchCon. Absolutely love that jacket. Um, down here we've got the Thrustmaster Warthog. The Thrustmaster Warthog is what I use for flight simming. This thing is incredibly heavy. I mean, real solid metal. Doesn't move around on your desk. It's fantastic. Down there we've got my Logitech G27, which is my old steering wheel. And if I just move that chair out of the way, over here, down here we've got a couple of things. We've got the Logitech 920 pedals, and we've also got my uh, Cytex Cessna Pro rudder pedals. So when I'm using those, I'll just get those pedals out and bring it, you know, put it over here and use it. And then just lives down there when I'm not flying, basically. That's my G27 pedal. That's my G920 pedal. I use them interchangeably depending on which wheel I use. This is the streaming PC. Um, I'll get onto the desk in a second to show you more what's going on. But this is my, this is my old gaming rig which I made into my streaming PC. It's an i7, which means it's pretty good at uh, media encoding. These are the headphones I use for the streaming PC, so I need to just check the sound levels. I will um, get those out there. Keyboard uh, for the streaming PC. And then on top, we have, well, starting from, from over here, this is the telephone. It has a dedicated telephone line in here, an internet connection. That's a USB hub that goes to the streaming PC. So that comes up through there and allows me to just plug things in if I need to into the streaming PC. Um, I use my Asus Strix mouse mat and this is the wheel, this is the mouse that belongs to the streaming PC. And this is the uh, my gaming mouse, which is a fantastic mouse, this Gladius mouse. That's what I use for gaming. Then I've got, which you've probably seen, four monitors. Now, how does this work? Well. That one there is my 140 hertz um, Asus gaming monitor. That's my primary monitor. I do my editing on that. I do all my gaming on that. 
and what you see on the stream is what's coming from that, sc that screen there, which is on that computer down there, which I built back in April. I'll have a look at it in a second, but you, you probably remember that if you watch the build video. Then up uh, to left, sorry, this is also on the gaming monitor. So these two monitors belong to the gaming rig. So I can game and have some kind of ancillary stuff here if I need it. And then these two monitors belong to the stream PC, which is down there. Now, you may be wondering what's going on on here, but basically what we've got here, we've got OBS running there, so that's capturing the gaming screen, as you can see. This is my custom um, panel down here, so you can see the chat coming out of my... That's because I moved the mouse. You can see the chat uh, coming out of my stream at the moment, as I'm just connected in there. And then up here, I will just basically run any other bits and pieces. If I need to check any documents, I need to look or anything, I'll have it up there. So I've got two monitors, plenty of space on the stream PC. And then down here, I'll have my, um, my Asus ZenPad 10, which I will watch the stream back on. Or if I need to check any Navigraph charts or anything like that, I'll, I'll basically run it here and then just use the keyboard I can type in. I've even got a little stylus I can touch if I want to. And that's my dog, by the way, in case you didn't know. That's Doyle, Westy, best dog ever. He's like five years old. This is my mixer. This is a Mackie Pro FX8. And you can kind of see what's going on down here. The, you slide that up and as I'm talking, you can see the sound levels are moving. We've got the microphone channel. Don't use that one at the moment. PC chat, that's TeamSpeak. So I can raise and lower the levels of TeamSpeak if I need to. Uh, PC game, that's the gaming level I can bring up and down. Uh, console, so when I'm playing Xbox, that will come into this mix. Microphone goes in there. This is the mic, so everything gets mixed down. Headphones basically plug into here. Uh, that's now playing again. Let me pause that. Come on, stop. Thank you. Um, these are my headphones. They are the Asus Orion, and I've connected a track IR to it there, as you can see. So I will game like this. The track IR sits on the left of the headphones. When I'm finished, I'll just hang it back on that hook. I'll show you that hook in a second. And on the top there, you've got the track IR sensor and you've got the Logitech webcam, which basically points at me and the green screen behind me and is what captures everything. So what have I not gone through? Uh, that's Sabrina. That's a little moo fate. The moo cow. Yep. It is what it is, <laughs> all the way from Switzerland. These are my eye drops because I get itchy eyes and stuff, particularly in, uh, in summer with the hay fever. Now, down here, let's go to the business end of things down here. That's my bin, not very interesting. Um, this, is, this is my gaming rig, but obviously I'll need to spin it around because I have it pointing that way because all the power cables then come out, out the back. And also it can draw the cool air in from the front, but yeah, if you watched my video, you'll have seen this machine being built. Uh, it's the Asus motherboard. It's a 4790 Intel processor, 4790K Devil's Canyon, um, 32 gig of RAM, twin Asus 980Ti's um, in SLI configuration. You can see the bridge there. Uh, Corsair Armour 850 power supply, SSDs. It's a bit of a monster. It's not Skylake. It's, it was built in April this year. So it's not the bleeding edge of technology, but it certainly doesn't mess around. It can certainly keep up with any game at the moment. Now you're probably thinking, whoa, that cable management squirrel, what are you doing, bro? There is method behind the madness. Now, with cable management, I've kind of changed my course a bit. I used to go for, you know, really, really tidy cable management, but it's, it's entirely pointless. Because, you know, every couple of days, I'll end up changing something. I'll end up moving something around. So my philosophy to cable management now is to make sure, firstly, you're not going to trip over anything. So safety's sake, get them all out the way. And secondly, make sure that you can't see them as best as possible. So if you, you know, if you're up here, which is where you normally are, you can't see the cables. They're gone. That's the main thing I go for. I even go to the point of hiding these cables. These aren't rooted because I've been messing about again. But normally they go through this bracket here. And then they disappear down that hole there. And there's the USB for the gaming rig. But you may have noticed back here, can you see what I've done here? Got these off eBay, cut them to size, and they just pull open. The cables sit behind them and clip shut. So the cables are, rather than having cables running up and down around the back wall where you can see them really unsightly, I just hide them all. 
and it works a treat. Down here though, the main philosophy is to label everything. So you'll see that my power set sockets are all labeled. I know exactly what they are and all of my sockets are switchable. So if I want to, I can just switch off anything and isolate it straight away. And I know which one's which because it's all plugged in. It's all labeled. These are my built-in network points, which you may have been seen before. When I had this, when I had this garage converted, I, um, I had network fitted. I fitted that myself actually and socketed and wired it all up myself to make sure I got exactly what I want. And then it all just goes down to a switch down the bottom end. I don't know if you see that switch down there, the net gear switch, it's all gigabit. And yeah, up here, we've got this kind of rack and these things come in sections. So you can buy as many of these things as you want and then they just connect together. And it, it runs all the entire length of the desk. It runs right down from one end to the other. And that carries most of the cables that need to go from, say, the streaming PC to the gaming PC. That will carry most of them. Um, and then you've just got a ton of cables here, which I'm not worried about because I actually label, even the cables are labeled. I don't know if you can see this or not. Do you remember those little things I showed you before um, that I got up from a garden center? That's what they are. If you can see this, I basically get the cable, wrap it around and then get a CD pen and just write on what it is. So I know where that cable goes. And again, that's fine for me. I know exactly what's going on when I look here. I don't think, oh, where does this wire go? I know where it goes, it's all labeled. It takes time to do, but then once you've done it once, it's all there and it works a treat. And because they're not all tightly bundled and tied together, I don't need to, you know, there's no administration in just changing something. I can just root another cable down, label it up, plug it in and I'm done. And that works for me. This was a, this is what I hang my headphones on. This was something I got from B&Q as well. Just a little garden center hook, just screwed into the bottom of the desk. That works nicely. It keeps the headphones from, you know, getting on the floor, gets them out of the way. They're not sat on my desk. These are Creative Sound Blaster external USB sound cards. So I use external USB sound cards to get better sound isolation. Otherwise, if you use the motherboard one, you often get crossover noise coming out on the motherboard and uh, it gets into the mixer and amplifies and you can just hear this kind of horrible noise. Uh, so I use external ones and then these are what you call ground loop isolators and they sit between the sound card and the mixer and just remove any noise. So there's just no noise on my audio. There will be on this one because I'm not using any of those mics, but normally that's why I've got good, good sound quality because of all that. Up here, we've got capture card stuff. So that's the sound card from the stream PC. Again, it's external. That brings in the mix from the mixer into the stream and records it um, or streams it, whatever it's doing. These two are Avermedia capture cards. Um, one's the old one and one's the new one. The one on the right, I think is the LGX. That one, that's the newer one. And this is the uh, Avamedi U3 sound, uh, capture card. The U3 is what I've been using for quite a while. Uh, the LGX is something fairly new that I've just got. It does the same thing as the U3. It does 1080 at 60 FPS, but this has HDMI pass through. So you can actually plug your graphics card into that and then pass it straight through to the monitor. Um, and then you don't get any lag whatsoever. There is one little thing I bought, um, which is down here, which needs to be wall mounted which isn't wall mounted yet. Um, I'll just get it all working. I only got this a couple of weeks ago. This is a 4K, 4K resolution, four way HDMI splitter. And what's going on here is the gaming PC is coming into it. Um, you could also have the console coming into it. You could have like PS4, Xbox One and PC coming into that. And then both outputs are there, it has two outputs on it. One goes to the monitor and the other goes to the capture card. What it means is you can press a button here and just switch from PC to PS4 to Xbox seamlessly. It's absolutely beautiful. It works so well and it carries the HDMI audio. And it even allows you to break the audio out if you want to and bring it somewhere else, which is just fantastic. So that's what's going on down here. That's the same hook there. That is the underbelly of what's going on. <laughs> but normally, let me just get my camera straight. Normally, this is what you see. I sit here. This is my, I don't really mentioned my chair, have I? This is my uh, GT Omega Racing gaming chair. This is very, very comfortable. I wanted it in black and white because that's my theme. It's a, uh, an XL size, I think it is. I sit on this, it's, it's beautiful. I can stream on it for many hours. 
And that's what I see, basically. That's what I see when I'm gaming or recording or streaming, whatever. They're the four screens that I see. I don't think I've missed anything out, have I? I think that's everything. Um, quick look around. We've gone through all of that. We've gone through all of that. Aircon, Harley D. Yep, it's all good. That's it. That's basically my my studio. This is my this is where the business happens. And I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, and I shall endeavour to answer them. Um, if you want to see my my parts, have a look at the build video where I built that. If you want to know how to build that from scratch, watch my um, how I built my gaming rig video. It's called. Uh, if you want to go for the chair or anything like that, or the Asus gear, just go to my stream, um, twitch.tv slash squirrel, and on that page there's a whole lunch, bunch of links to various things. And my forums, go to squirrel.tv, click on the forum at the top, and there's a whole load of um, like how-to guides, and it'll list my hardware, there's all kinds of information there, but just post on the forums as well if you want to answer a question. There's some great admins on the forums, um, great mods in the Twitch stream, and they will answer all your questions. There's one last thing I forgot. Blimey, how did I miss this? I've just seen it now. This is a Rode NT3B shotgun microphone with a uh, pop filter on it, if you like. It's very thin. It's called a shotgun mic because it literally points at you like that. And this is the Rode NT1A arm, I think it's called. And basically what happens is that just clamps down there. It just clamps onto here. And it allows me to just bring the microphone in. So you, I, I generally play with it like in that position there, you see? Um, so I'm talking and it'll pick up, as long as it's pointing towards your face, it'll pick up beautiful audio. You can, of course, put it up here and have it pointing down to you. And that's a common thing in like the movie industries where you see the guy with the boom arm and he's like holding a microphone pointing down. So it comes over the top because it's out of shot. But for me, that works beautifully well. Um, but the advantage of this arm is it lets you just, you know, move it out the way when you're done. That's it. That's, uh, that's my gaming room. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. That's my dog. He says goodbye. I say goodbye. Take care, guys. Till next time, take it easy. Bye-bye.